football fans, this is Jack Trees. Your Phillips 60 Cyber Michigan, it's Michigan versus Minnesota. It's a big day in Ann Arbor, Michigan for 86,200 football fans as they stream into the Michigan Stadium for today's annual Little Brown Jug Battle. It's not entirely a Michigan crowd as several thousand Gopher fans have made the trip. And partisans for both sides pick up their team colors before the game. Out on the field comes the dazzling Michigan Marching Band, a band so expert that it has become one of the most renowned units in America. The last time Michigan played in the Rose Bowl, the band so completely stole the show that it caused the rival university band leader to resign. Equally expert are the bouncing cheerleaders. Watch this. But now a mighty roar goes up, a roar to greet the champion Wolverines who have not been defeated by Minnesota in this long-standing rivalry for the last eight years. And here come the Golden Gophers, now under the coaching of Wes Fessler, determined to halt the long Michigan streak. Last year, they held the Big Ten champions to a 7-7 to -seven tie. <laughs> More than one way to get into this football game. Make that 86,201. For the coin, Minnesota's captain, center Wayne Robinson, wins the flip, and the Gophers elect to receive the kickoff. Michigan skipper, halfback Bill Pudich, chooses his end of the field, and the game is ready to go. The Wolverines gather around their coach, famed All-American Benny Oosterbahn, while across the field, Wes Fessler rounds up the Gophers for his last-minute instructions, and we're ready for the kickoff. And the Phillips 66 game of the week is underway. There goes the ball. Far downfield, Ron Engels is waiting for, takes it on his own six-yard line. Fumbles it momentarily, but he has it now. And look at that boy scamper. He breaks through the first wall of defenders, and he's on his way. Watch him go. All the way for a touchdown on the opening play of the game. And they moved into Minnesota territory now in the Gophers 49. Fake pitch out, and then a handoff to West Bradford. He cuts to the inside. Spins clear, gets past the secondary, and here's another touchdown. <laughs> McNamara on an end around, swings around wide to the left. He's got blockers in front of him, gets away from the first tackler, runs into two more, and brother, that is really off. Swanson back to throw, he pegs one complete to Ron Guile. Guile grabs it. Runs pretty much laterally and is rolled out of bounds after a gain of four yards. Now it's a pitch out. Goes to Ron Wallen. He's coming wide around left end. Gets to the 20. Is dropped just on the other side of the 20-yard line. Now line plays. Carried to the Michigan 11 where we pick up the play. Minnesota first and 10. Dial back to throw a forward pass. He pitches one down toward the end zone. But Dave Tinkham steps in there again and intercepts that forward pass and brings it out to the Michigan 12. 105 on the Michigan 17. And a quick kick. The ball is going down across the 50-yard stripe. Fred Swanham is after the football, looking up the field. He better keep an eye on that one. And he fumbles that ball. He's touched it. It's anybody's football now, and Michigan recovers. So that makes the Michigan's ball fourth and seven on the Minnesota 12. Single wing over to the left. Bill Putich with the ball. Trying to pass. He decides against it. Starts to run. Swings around right end. Nice blocking there, and he's in the end zone. Michigan has suddenly scored. And at the end of the first quarter, the score stands. Michigan 14, Minnesota 7. Plenty of time. He gets the kick away. Lowell Perry, the safety man, is getting under the football. He gathers it in and starts on his way. Cutting laterally to let his blockers do a little bit of work. He swings over near the sidelines. He's getting in the clear. There he goes. Lowell Perry is on his way to another Michigan touchdown. Just about the time you settle back in your seats, along comes another spectacular score. The formation line on balance to the right. Going from the tee, it's a pitch out to the fullback, Mel Holm. Trying the left side of the line. His blocking runs out on him. He picks up four yards. Osterman made the tackle, and it's second down and six for Minnesota. Now with the ball once again. Nice protection as he drops back to throw another forward pass. Archers one into the air. Bill Foss is under it and has it in a beautiful over-the-shoulder catch. He is dropped by Tinkham, but that was good for a gain of 29 yards. 
Boy, Benny Oosterbahn is a worried man on that Michigan bench now. Just a moment ago, things looked dandy. Minnesota going through the air and moving with great speed toward that Michigan goal line. Guile back to throw another forward pass. Pegs one to Don Swanson. He gathers it in. It's good for a gain of four yards as he caught it on the line of scrimmage and moved forward. Second down and six. Guile back to throw again. Again, the pass is good. It's completed to Martin Ng. He laterals to Swanson as he's tackled on the five, and Swanson is in there. The Gophers have scored. They missed the extra point, and Michigan leads 28 to 20 at the half. Each week on our Phillips 66 game of the week, we pay tribute to a Big Ten university. This week, it's the University of Michigan. Stately Burton Tower overlooks the Michigan campus. Functional as well as beautiful, its big clock and massive bells help to keep students on time. One of the university's most famous landmarks is the Engineering Arch, a familiar sight to all Michigan students. Enrollment at Ann Arbor now totals 17,000, and there are three men to every girl. Foreign student enrollment is traditionally high at Michigan, and here two of them chat in front of the International Center, a social meeting place for young people of many lands. All freshmen at the university live in residence halls like this one, Mosier Jordan Hall for Women. Its carefully tended grounds and rolling lawns provide a place for relaxing on sunny autumn afternoons. Second down and nine yards to go. Ted Toper back to throw a pass. He gets it away just as he's hit, and it's complete to Lowell Perry. Perry grabs that ball, cuts back now. And as he crosses the midfield stripe, he's gradually getting behind the Minnesota secondary, and he races downfield into the clear and into the end zone for a touchdown. Once again, striking with the suddenness that has characterized this football game. Michigan races 71 yards for a score. On the Buck lateral series, the ball winds up in the hands of Paul Guile. He tries for left end but can't make it. Russ Osterman was in there to dump him, and it's a loss of four yards on the play. Fourth and eight now. Judich with the ball, back to throw a pass. Gets away from the first rusher, arches a long, long pass, and Fred Pickard has it. Both tacklers belt themselves out of play. He's in the clear, and it's another Michigan touchdown. Paul Guile from the tailback spot, back to throw. Looks for a target, lets the ball go, but Oldham takes that ball on the hop off the hands of the intended receiver. Intercepting for Michigan. Oldham carrying that ball to the 39-yard line where he's brought down. Paul Guile, or Don Swanson, rather, is deep, and he fumbles that football. Trying to get back toward that line of scrimmage, he runs into trouble in the person of Tom Johnson and is dropped for a loss of 15 yards. So it's second and seven now for the Gophers on their own 27-yard line. Paul Guile is back this time. He throws a quick forward pass to Mel Holm. It's good. Good for a gain of 12 yards and a first down for Minnesota. Michigan out in front, 48 to 27 over the Gophers, but they're still in there, fighting every inch of the way. Paul Guile now with the ball. He starts to run and is trapped for a loss. That's a six-yard loss. Russ Osterman was the first in there to hit him. And that makes it fourth and six. Guile back to throw. Again, the pass goes into the end zone. Don Oldham has it. Just inside the end zone, across the 10, the 15, and the 20, along the sidelines, and he is moving and moving fast. Still on his feet, he crosses the midfield stripe. Look at that boy go. Don Oldham legging it toward that Minnesota goal line, and he is just tripped up after a run back of some 82 yards. First and 10 on the Minnesota 18. Don Zenfania passing. Takes one into Stanford, and it's a touchdown for Michigan. That is the end of the ball game. A tremendous ball game, an explosive one, where you never knew where your next touchdown was coming from. Minnesota Michigan Trophy since 1903 is on its way to the trophy case of the University of Michigan for another year. Minnesota 27, Michigan 54.